Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner, he steps aside. And so the information that is given from this point forward is not his. But he lets it flow. And as he does in his own way, he verifies that it's still an energy filled with the love of God and light and purity. And that's what I want to talk about among other things. Perception, consciousness, light, dark. I'm looking at old souls in the room. That is those who have been through many energies on the planet. And it includes some of you who were shamanic. And in an old energy, there was a demarcation of dark and light that was palatable. The light workers spent as much time fighting evil and the dark as you did generating the light. Even as little as 10 years ago, a healer who approached an individual had to shield themselves from the negativity that the individual carried. You live in the world and you're human. And you leave this place and you rub shoulders with so many different kinds of consciousnesses and energies. And many of you still are absolutely convinced you must battle the dark side. And I have told you now for three years, it's different. And if you're going to line up and battle the dark in the same way you have in the last 20 years, you haven't got it yet. You don't understand yet. You're free of this. And you might say, well, they're still there. I want to tell you, if you are sensing negativity, it's your negativity that you're sensing. Because the light right now, right now in this room is washing it clean. Right now. Listen to me. Light is active. Dark is not. It's passive. That means when you turn on the light in a dark room, the dark is gone. And right now, in this room, even though there may be older negative influences and energies and thoughts, they are buried in light at the moment. At the moment. Light worker, if you go out and you're a healer, I want you to know that your light is so strong, darkness doesn't have a chance. Not a chance. Wherever you walk, you turn on the light in the dark room. Do you realize darkness does not have an energy of its own? It must have an absence of light to win. I want you to think of that for a moment. What is, what is happening right now? Through your intent, you've turned on a light. You might be a negative person sitting there. You might not even be an old soul. I want to tell you that the light around you pushes that so far away. Right now is a good time for an awakening. That's what's happening. That's what is different. Light worker, you may have worked a certain way for years and years. You may be proud of the way you work, battling the dark in the way you do. And I am telling you, stop battling the dark and turn on your light. Because that is the only thing that's going to work. That is new. Another question has been asked about cellular evolvement, physicalness of the human body. All of the work that you have done today in this workshop, what does it do? What happens? Where is it going? Will you start feeling it physically? And the answer is, of course. 
If you're going to change your cellular structure with consciousness, what do you think? You think you'll just walk around the way you always did? Or would there be a shift and a change literally, physically, in how you feel? And the answer is, of course there will be. As you work on yourselves, the first thing that you're going to feel is peace. Now I happen to know that there are those in here who are not peaceful. You get up from your chair, you walk out there, you're not peaceful. There's always something you're battling. I know who is here. I know who is here. Listen to me. Aren't you tired of this? Or do you think it's your legacy? Or are you proud of it? It's old. It's not necessary. This is the new human being, the one who is going to hold the God inside and have a light that is so powerful that wherever they walk, the negativity will run the other way. It's new. Isn't it time to relax, to chase the fears away? and be peaceful in your life. To raise out of the chair and feel a different physical you. And with this comes better health. I want you to listen to me for a moment. There's some of you who wish you could change certain things within your bodies, certain chemistry, You've tried certain things, it doesn't help, doesn't work. Do you know what the catalyst is for everything you've ever wanted? Relax and be peaceful. Did you know that? Because then you give your body a chance to talk to you. For your metabolism to start shifting, for your cells to work in a way that's going to give you better health, catch fewer colds, have better energy, not worry. You walk around straighter because you're, you're, you're more part of the light of the planet. There's no more burden. I know who's here. But I want to tell you the big one. What you are doing with the light by talking to yourselves, by having these processes, whether it's body talk or tapping or decoding, any kind of processing you are doing that is raising the vibration of your DNA and causing a better efficiency, anything you're doing is changing something that we have never really talked about that much. What happens? to that which is your cellular structure as it starts to increase its vibration. And the answer is, it vibrates higher. Now, you're not going to get some instrument in some hospital that's going to measure the vibration of your cells. Dear ones, this is metaphoric. At the same time, it's multidimensional. We have said this before. All of you have multidimensionality. You walk around with a multidimensional field, which is called the Merkava. It's the vehicle you ride in, which is spiritual. It is not to be seen by any science yet. It's multidimensional. There is something we call the vibration of your cellular structure, which is also the percentage of which it is efficient. We have told you you're moving past a third, a 33% into a 44% efficiency. It's going to change the children. It's going to change how you think, and it's going to do something else. I would like to tell you something. Maybe I've never discussed it this way before. Do you realize that disease is a low vibration? vibration. And what do you think it means when you raise your cellular vibration from an old one to a new one? Guess what? 
The old cannot attack the new. What you're doing is changing a cellular structure and avoiding and literally creating a new human structure that the old diseases cannot get to. Guess what the old diseases look for? Lower vibration, negativity, fear. Where are you? What are you afraid of? And I've just given you the secret for health. If you're going to stay in fear, it's almost like you're opening the door. As you start to ascend, you have heard the word before, you're ascending by making your cellular structure a higher vibration. When you do that, so many of the old things will drop away. Your body is smart and it wants you to be balanced. Now, questions have been asked, how do I start this? What do I do? Intent. If you give intent verbally and you mean it because you cannot trick yourself if you mean it there is a process we have discovered we have discovered <laughs> we have discussed before <laughs> and this is a process that has no name your innate senses your intent and starts to shift your body even before you do. You've seen it for a long time and you don't know what it's called. Have any of you figured out how homeopathy works? I mean the mechanics of it. When you give your body an intent from a small tincture, a chemical which you may ingest that is too small for the body to have any kind of an allopathic reaction, way too small, the body sees the intent of the tincture and begins to heal itself because you just sent it a signal. This is a smart body. That's how it works. And it does work. Now think of doing the same thing with consciousness. You're going to give your body now a tincture of intent. Here is what I want. I am done worrying. I am done being fearful of everything around me. I am done with drama. I am done with gossip. I am done with bad health. And your body sees the reality of the tincture of truth. And it starts to correct itself even before you give affirmations. That's help. You're in a new age, not an old age that just changed a little. You're in a new age. And this age carries with it new processes that actually may be controversial to the old processes. And there will be those who grew up in the new age who will see this and go, it can't be right, and not follow along. Some of them are dying early because of this. They just can't go with it. They see it coming. Some readers have actually stopped reading because the new energy was a little too much for them and they didn't understand the rules. They didn't think they could do it. Some healers have stopped healing. This is how new it is. It's almost like you recalibrated everything you knew about dark and light. And now you're starting again. And light is more powerful. It's not just more powerful. It's winning. The ancients saw it. This is not a cryon message. Dear humanity. The ancients saw it coming. The calendars of the Maya saw it coming.
The indigenous of the earth saw it coming and they called it for what it was, a new consciousness of humanity. We're excited for you. Some will accept it and some will not. That's how new it is. Dear ones, what are you going to do? You sit all day through something like this. Did you believe it? Did you participate? Were you just having fun? Maybe you were just interested. Or is it going to change your life? And I will tell you the change your life part is not that hard. Do you have the courage to drop what you think you knew and take a look at something new? Do you? Old souls, some of you are stuck. You've been battling this stuff so long that no matter what I say, or no matter what you see, you're going to continue battling. And I want to tell you, the army has changed. The tools have changed. And light is going to win. Going to generate light? Or are you going to continue doing it the old way? You going to look for new diets, dear ones, to change your body? Or are you going to change your metabolism, which then will give you the new diet? This is a change in everything. You want to have more energy in your life? Stop being afraid. It couldn't be simpler. And yet, it's difficult because some of these things are etched into you in a way that even right now you may be objecting to. Twenty thirteen. We told you of the shift. We says it's such a great shift that that year would not even be counted as a year. Only a change, a time of shift, change, and that would affect some of yours health. And it did. It did. Because this is the kind of thing that the body has to readjust to and get ready for. It's profound. It's new. It's real. What are you going to do with it? This is the message of Cryon. It's the reason I came. To show a love and a light to you, to the God source, and make you understand that it's yours. And that you don't have to work for it because it lives in you. All you have to do is uncover it. Believe it. And drop the old stuff. Where are you in that plan at the moment? Wherever you are, there's an outstretched hand of God. Light. That wants to take yours and change everything. That's the promise of a new, new age. Go from this place not confused, but enlightened, aware, and ready to shift. This is not a community event, dear ones. I am speaking to one soul, and it's yours. And I want you to recognize me. I want you to recognize the brother that has always been there, the sister that has always been there. We have no gender. I want you to recognize through your discernment and yours alone, not group, that this is from the other side. And yet it's in you. And that there's this odd, mysterious thing that, that takes what is on the other side and so grand and so big and yet is so small within your heart. Literally part of the makeup of the cellular human being in every piece of chemical 
in your DNA, God is there. This was the plan. My partner speaks of the creation story. This was the plan. That inside you wouldn't be an animal, but eternal life. The ability for the soul to reside, to live, to flourish, to learn, and to advance and evolve. You are discovering who you are. I come here with wonderful news, but it's going to fall on the floor, and you're going to leave without hearing it, unless you discern that it's real. I want so much to come in. I am part of what you're part of. The earth is changing. Light is starting to increase. There's an awakening going on, not just with light workers and old souls, but a coalescing consciousness of what people want. A slight move toward peace on earth and a wrap up of an old energy and old things and old ways dark energy that has been here through hate and intolerance for thousands of years is going to stop and the ones who are going to stop it are the children now I am going to speak of something right now that is beyond what you would think of for you do everything you can to stay in your body and survive this is your focus Many of you are finding spirit, finding God inside. This is your focus, but at all costs, you remain. So what I'm going to tell you is this. Far beyond that, dear ones, the next time around, I would like to introduce you to the new children. It's going to be you. Do you think for a moment that you're going to forget this? You're going to remember who you are, not by name but by energy. Tolerance and compassion is your focus and even as children you will show it. If your anger is there and your frustration is there as a child it will be because of the inequities that you see. You will not be attracted to drama. You will be the peacemakers and the beginning of a new consciousness. Some of the children have it today. We have talked about that. And you know who they are. You're seeing them, some of you, in your grandchildren. Wise, beyond their years, and tolerant. And we talk about tolerance not just between the colors and the races. We talk about the tolerances of belief systems. Of that which perhaps would be historic. There's no reason in a child's mind to have separation. You understand what that's going to mean to the planet? This is spiritual evolution. It is the key. It is the tool. And the old soul in this room is coming back. But while you're here, there are things you can also do in the transition, which is going to be a while. Dear old soul, I have told you this before. I talk to you alone. Listen to me. You can't sit and wait for things to get better. They're not going to get better unless you make them better. And it's not by holding signs or running for office. It's little things that you're going to do that are going to change literally the grids of the planet, the consciousness of the planet in ways you cannot fathom. My partner showed you consciousness over physics. What if your consciousness could raise above what it was in mass in this room? What would happen on the planet? There could be changes based only on what my partner has shown you so far that science recognizes. Consciousness is powerful. 
The master showed it to you. I'm going to give you a channel later. It's going to get personal. Where are you today? What's next? What might you do at home by yourself that would make a difference? This is what we want to show you. Question, could this be real? A man in a chair speaking, but the consciousness from the other side of the veil, which is winding its way to you through his filters from the great creative source. 25 years he has practiced this and now he knows what it feels like to be pure. In these moments to be pure. To throw away his biases and what he wants to say and instead he's open. Speaking to a brother and a sister right now. What are you going to do with this? How does it feel to be loved this much, to be known, to be eternal right now? Didn't you feel it? How many of you, when you came into this planet, felt comfortable? Most of you did because you've been here before many times. A spark of life that enters you and the whole cellular structure within weeks knows it's been here before. Things are not mysterious. You've seen how it works and you're at it again. This is how an old soul knows they're an old soul. Also the frustrations of what is around you. Why do you ask the questions? It's because you know better. Why won't you accept what people told you to accept? You know better. Why should you be the rebel that you are? And you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I'm society and the way things work. And you say, no, I'm not going to do that to so many. Because you know better. Because there is an awakening of wisdom and common sense that is fighting an old energy of structure that will never create that. This is who you are. Now how do you fit this into society? <laughs> Tonight we're going to give you some, some hints and clues, some things we've told you before and perhaps some new things. Wrap it up together personal what what's next for you is this message real or is it the man in the chair this is free choice dear ones there's a lot of help in the room right now we have here entities if you want to call them that energies that stand around you with their hands hovered over you delivering to you what is called the third language. That means that this language I'm giving you, which is English, which is my partner's, is minor compared to what is being transmitted to you at an etheric level, right into your pineal, to give you intuitive thoughts that you need to have, personal healing. Prepare for answers, because that's why you came. The fact is that God is inside every single human being to the fullest degree that the human will allow it. If the human agrees that the door can always be open, this is the finest thing that we want to hear. 
Instead of compartmentalizing your meditations, your prayer time, or your channeling, it's always there, it's always available. And so it's not just a church experience. It's not a reporting on Sunday experience. It's a 24-7. It's a 24-7. And even as you sleep, there is a blessing of your dreams. And when you awake in the morning, you feel it. And you know, there is no switch to be turned by a human being that wants to honor God. In review, we have been telling you for weeks, if not longer, of the things happening on the planet of the energies. We've told you about the, the future. We've been telling you about the energies that are coming in the next three years. We have been discussing things which are multidimensional and some things which are confusing. We're talking about the human soul and the attributes to come and what it means and where you are in history and what year you are in the progression of evolution. And yet, when we would gather with a group of human beings and we would say, and now what are your questions? They would say, what do I do next? How does it, how does it work with me now? As a person who has to live in my society and fit into a box, the way I earn my living, what I do around others, my children, my families, I'm not able to be a monk and, and just walk away. What is it I can do as an old soul for this planet? And I'm going to address it. There are several attributes that I want to give you, and they are almost equal in the number. It's not about actions. It's about your consciousness and how you perceive all of this. The first thing I want you to do is to relax and know that you belong here. This is going to be belief, and we have talked about this before. You really want to know what to do? Every single one. I want you to relax and know you belong here. There are some who would equate your importance with your deeds. And you'd say, well, I haven't done this and I haven't done that. I haven't gone here. Some of you have said, well, this person has written many books. I've not done anything. I want you to relax. And I want you to know this from me to you, dear ones, in all love, I want to tell you, your being here is enough. Do you know what this means to the planet to have a human dynamo, a generator of light living here? with the experience that you've had, old soul, where you've been there and you've done that and you've solved the problems and you've had thousands of lifetimes in both genders and here you are walking around asking me what to do. You've done it. Your very existence is light for the planet. Now I'm going to give you some attributes to make that light shine in a time when we need it. Because this is your time. But don't you ever ask what you should do. Because you've done it. I couldn't be stronger in the love that it takes to give you this. No matter what your age. Young person, senior, it doesn't matter. The light is multidimensional. It'll carry over the gap of death. Some of you will plant things just by being here which will remain on this planet forever because consciousness stays. The things you do and say are remembered by humans. Sometimes humans that are small and you will change their lives just by what you say and how you act and what you do. 
Sometimes there will be a person riding along with you, watching how you react to somebody else on the, on the freeway, perhaps, who is not as kind. And they'll never forget your reaction of, of compassion instead of anger. They may even mold themselves after you, and you'll never know it. You are influential because of who you are. You're experienced, and it shows. Experienced. What the experience often does is taint you, and you know it does. You expect more from people. Because you've been here so often and done so many things, and you hit a situation where there's uncaring or inefficiency, <laughs> and you are then one who would say, it didn't work for me. You expected more. I know this, old soul. And these are the things you're going to begin to ship. So it's not about what to do next, it's about how to be. And so we're going to give you a little list here. It's a personal list. We always, get, we, we, we always give you the things that you need to hear for the audience who is listening and is here. I know who you are, we always do. It drives the channels, if you didn't know that. You need to hear it. In the room are giants of old souls. Giants. How many of you remember the shamanic energy that you used to have? Some of you are beginning to pick it up again and you feel it so profoundly you're even dressing like it honored for it all of it you were beginning to awaken to God inside and it has so many forms for there are so many civilizations that you've been through and there is no beginning of judgment about how you process this dear ones God inside is unique unique for every single one of you you've been here so many times and done so much I already gave you number one. Relax and know that you're here on purpose. And being here is enough. Number two, I want you to start understanding and believing what we're telling you about these times. Because there are so many going into fear right now for what is happening on the planet. Now this we have told you before, but this is personal because I know who's here. It's going to be frightening to some of you to see what is happening on the planet for it hurts your heart. There's a tendency to check out and what I mean by that is not death, but to simply turn your back and say, I've done my part, I'm done doing my part. It's getting a little hard. And I'll tell you what, this is why you came, warrior. This is why you're here. I don't want you to have to watch it on television. I don't want you to even have to know about it. I want you instead to not fear it. The fear will shut you down. For it is going to be chased away eventually by you. Holding light at home, at work, at play. And practicing compassionate action on this planet. Do not despair. That is primary. We told you that. Here is the, is the third one. I'm going to call it acceptance of a quality that has not been here before. This is new to you. This energy is creating benevolence in all aspects of your life. Your consciousness and the change of it and your belief of it and your acceptance of it triggers things 
that have not been here before. There are energies now on the planet being flooded with light. There are actually entities and beings coming here by the tens of thousands that you have no description for. There is nothing that we've ever told you about it that are flying here at light speed, you might say, for your benefit, but it isn't, to change who you are. You've got help. You've got help. You walk outside and you step on the earth. The earth is different because you're an old soul. Your free choice has given you an advantage for the first time of awareness of a new energy that is occurring. And this legion of light beings is going to start helping you in all things. Now, I haven't really put it that way before, but that's the way of it. And that's the way it should feel. What do you think about the statement? Old soul, you have been pushing the mountain forever. It's been tough and hard, and every time you were born, it was hard. You were up against an old energy. And if you were brave enough to ever raise your hand and say what you felt about God inside, or even worse, have shamanic energy, it was not a pretty sight. Cast away some of you, exercised some of you, isolated some of you, killed some of you. And here's what I want to tell you. There is more acceptance today from the general civilization of your shamanic energy and your compassionate spirit than in any time in human history. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. And the help is here. Believe in the benevolent source that is going to help you to your next step. You never had it before. Start pushing on the doors that you think have been closed forever about where you might go and what you might do or what others might think of you. And you're going to find new acceptance. Don't be surprised whether your light is seen differently than it ever was before. Here's another one. Now we get into action. Dear ones, do not isolate yourselves from the rest of the world. This is what you've been doing because you had to for survival. In order to believe what you believe, you collect in groups because you know the others are not going to be with you. Dear ones, when your neighbor sees you coming and they cross the street to avoid you, you know something is up. Huh? You've isolated yourself through your belief or your actions. And that's got to change. And it's not going to change by anything except that which is your personality becoming softer. Less critical. More loving, more benevolent. Some of this is difficult because it is not what you have been in the past. But I want to tell you, as soon as you start looking at things differently and you say to your cellular structure, your Merkaba, to the God inside, I am changing. I am more compassionate. I am more aware. I am that I am. It all lights up. It all lights up. And you walk around no longer in the dark because those who need to see your light will be attracted to you. And the entities that I've talked about and all of those who are flying to earth to help will then be attracted to this consciousness and you're going to be lifted and it's going to be easier. We told you a while back at Christmas time. Do the hardest thing you can ever do. Go back and be with the relatives and be peaceful with it. 
And some of them know what you represent. That you perhaps left the fold, or you left the religion, or you left the belief system. They sometimes see you as odd and strange. That is changeable with compassion. Because the action that you have, which is compassionate, is what they will see. Don't tell them about cryon. Don't tell them about Pleiadians. Don't tell them anything. Show them love. Your compassion will do more for this planet than any other single thing. It's the light source. It is not your job, dear ones, to take a human being and convince them you're right. It is not your job to make them come to a meeting like this. It is not your job to do anything but to love humanity in a way that is so attractive they'll want to be next to you. And when they are someday, and they look at you and they ask, what have you got that I don't have? Then you can tell them, <laughs> you've got God inside. Without a doctrine, perhaps, without a building, perhaps. And they'll listen. This is the army of light that is going to win this world. And we've told you before, it's not what you think. Because the actual truth is that consciousness is over physics and is always able to change it. You just don't know it yet. And that your compassion will be seen as a driving force of this planet. If you're a healer, congratulations, we need you. If you're a reader or a healer, channeler, or author, it was that which came about because it needed to be, and you came in with the tools for it. Congratulations. And if you're not, I want to tell you that compassion is the king. You're going to do more with your compassion than any channeler or healer. Don't isolate yourself. I want you to start practicing affirmations. It's time that you understood sound, consciousness, color, all of these things have energies. My partner has talked about the numerology, all of these things. Affirmations is your consciousness with your voice speaking to your reality and your cells saying the things you want them to hear. And you do it in the first person, I am. I know who's here. Perhaps you should wake up in the morning and say, I am healed. I am getting a good night's sleep. I am pleased and celebrate this day. Could you say that every morning? I am pleased, meaning that you are happy with your existence. And you're celebrating the day. Affirmations, develop them first person, positive, and start saying them to yourself out loud. Crying, do I really have to say them out loud? It's better if you do, your ears will hear it. Your ears hear it, and it's a different reality. It's a 3D reality, it's what you're used to. Let your ears hear who you are. And in your stellar structure, there is data that, is, that has its antennas out, just ready to hear from the boss, who are you? I am healed. I am benevolent. I am compassionate. I am happy in my existence. It is well with my soul. That's powerful. And everything you do along this line will collect light. <laughs> you will start to change faster than you've ever changed before. Expect 
healing and change in your life that is faster than ever before. Let the proof of my words tonight be in how fast this occurs. And you'll know there's a benevolent energy that's attaching itself to you. It's so good. God is going to get bigger for you. Light worker. Army of the light. Last one. This is tough. It's out of your culture. It's out of your civilization. It's not in your tradition. I know who's here. I want you to try something for me. See how it feels. I want you to start honoring your ancestors. Now, I know who's here. And you're saying, I don't know who they are. <laughs> It's a different world today than it was for the indigenous where they lived in one spot and could track back their lineage for generations. I'm not talking about your grandfather. <clears throat> I want you to be abstract. Your ancestors are your spiritual family and some of them are you in past lives. I want you to honor the process of ancestry. Reincarnation begets family who then becomes reincarnated. Some of them are your ancestors. You don't know their names. You cannot picture them. You don't even have photos. But the concept is to honor those who came before you, some of whom are you, and do it every day. The reason I mention this is because it's a return to the old tradition. It's honored by God. It is a way that your free choice is saying, I understand the system. It's beautiful. It's benevolent. And I honor it. It couldn't be clearer. And we haven't heard that from you in this society in hundreds of years. In the morning, some place where you cannot be heard. Thank you, ancestors, for bringing me here now at this time. It's personal, and these are the points that I wanted to tell you today. It's not about the energy of the future. It's not about grandiose things. It's about you today. Don't leave, dif don't, don't leave the same. Leave different than you came. Think about these things. Be aware of these things. If you work with this, dear old soul, you will have results. I promise. If you have pure intent to make it work, you're going to see results. It's time to stop the worry and the drama. Stay away from what I will call voluntarily negative attributes. This is negativity that you voluntarily participate in and you may not even be aware of it. Does what is on your television offend your heart? Then turn it off. If you need to know what's happening in the world, get a magazine. Use the internet. You can go at your own pace and see what you need to see. Not what others think you need to see. If you're in a room and they wish to gossip, don't participate. Leave if you can. Be compassionate instead of criticizing. Do not participate in the negativity. It'll shut it down, dear ones. Watch it happen. When you don't participate in the circle that is moving and spinning, it stops. These are the things that every day you can do as a light worker. There's more. So many things that I could give you on a day by day basis that I know that you can literally walk away from if you wish. Drama. When you walk into a drama, walk out. If you see it developing, stop it by compassionate action. Do not defend yourself. 
It doesn't help. <laughs> Be compassionate. If someone calls your names, that's their problem, not yours. <laughs> Be compassionate with their having a bad day. <laughs> Dear ones, there are ways where you can change who you are and they will notice. They won't say it, but they'll see you as a little more mature than they are. And then don't be surprised if they decide to emulate it because it's really attractive. Love is attractive. Light is attractive. Benevolence and beauty is attractive more than ever before. And the old soul knows more than anyone on the planet how to make it work. This is the message for you this evening, this day. Again, leave differently than you came. And so it is.